Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I'm gonna to reveal to you the surefire guaranteed way to make your first million in the next five to 10 years if right now you're a broke student. This is genuinely 99% guaranteed to make you rich if you watch the entire video and really take in what I'm trying to tell you here. And listen, I'm coming up to my 10th year as an entrepreneur, I have seen everything and I have over a dozen companies that I personally own or my holding company has equity stakes in. So I've kind of seen it all. And I can tell you for a fact that this is pretty much the most surefire route. But as I said, if you watch this video, if you truly take it in and if you truly apply what I'm about to tell you. Now, listen, times have changed and the world is extremely different to what it was like 100 years ago. That said, some business principles are timeless. Now, 100 years ago, if you wanted to get rich quickly, and by the way, when I say quick, most people think quick means two months or five months. I'm talking quick in the normal world is, hey, I made the intention that I am going to go from nothing to something, go from having average income to becoming a millionaire. Quick is five to 10 years. It's not five to 10 months. Normally, 100 years ago, even right now, if you want to become a millionaire, you know, from the point in which you get your degree, it'll take you 20, 30 years. So trust me, when I say five to 10 years, that is a good timeline. Now, I say five to 10, but it'll probably be a lot quicker for you. But getting back to my point, 100 years ago, the way you would do it is you would either be an employee at a fast growing company and bring so much value to the company that they just can't help themselves but pay you more. Now, obviously, you need to continue to make your value known and renegotiate with your company and just say, hey, I know what I'm bringing to the table, so make sure that I'm getting paid adequately. So that's the first route, but that's not really what I want to talk about here today. The second route is you work inside of a fast growing company, a company where you can learn a lot and you work in that company for two years, three years, four years, five years. And then you take everything that you've learned and you go and you start your own business in a similar industry. And from there, you add in hard work and you absolutely take off. And you may even bring in 1% the amount of business that the company you used to work for, but that's fine because you have 100% ownership. Now, as I said, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, this would have been the path. The path would have always started with you working at a company or at an organization and understanding that in your early years, you need to prioritize learning over earning. Earning can come a little later, but in your early years, I'm talking specifically here as a student, as a teenager, someone in your early, early 20s, learning should always be the priority. Now, before I get into the real meat of this video on the topic of learning, so many of you guys ask very business specific questions or questions that are specific to your situation. And unfortunately on YouTube, I just can't really answer them. So that's why earlier this year, I started an Instagram called Talk With Eman. On there, I try to do Q and A's once a week. I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I get busy, so it's not weekly, sometimes it's two or three times a month, but I try my best. So I do free Q and A's on there, and every once in a while, I will also do a live Q and A and just answer some of your guys' questions live. So you can just type on your phone, talk with Eman, follow the account, and I will try to answer your question on the next Q&A that I do. But getting back to the main point here, the reason I wanted to talk about 100 years ago is I want to explain really what I'm seeing right now in society and why that is keeping you poor, that's keeping you dumb, and it's keeping you stuck. You see, the issue is in modern society, everyone is in such a rush to become a millionaire. And the reason they're in such a rush is because of the things that they think it will give them. And by the way, I'm specifically speaking to the teenagers and the students here. You've got kids who are 16 who are in such a rush to become a millionaire because I know exactly what they're thinking. They're thinking, hey, once I'm a millionaire, I'm going to get all the girls or people are going to be impressed and I'm going to be able to buy these things. And I'm going to talk to you very frankly as someone who made their first million dollars in cash in the bank at the age of 18. I'm going to tell you this right here, right now. When you make money at an early age, and I'm not talking early like 25 or 27, 28, because that's still earlier, or maybe even 23 or 24. I'm talking early as in 18, 21. No one is impressed. They just think you are a lucky kid. I can tell you this because I experienced this. Very few people thought he was a genius. They're like, oh, he got lucky at an early age and he's probably going to lose all of it. Because honestly, that's what happens 98% of the time. So that's number one. And number two, girls don't want you at that age. Either you have someone like your high school sweetheart who loves you no matter what. So it doesn't matter if you make your first million at 18 or at 28, this girl's in it for the long run. Or if you're trying to pick up new girls, 
They're more concerned with like the 28 year olds, the 30 year olds, the sort of girls that you think money is gonna attract. They don't want a guy who's 18 or 21. And so the reason I make that clear is because everyone who's 16, 18, 20 is in such a rush. You know, let me make my first million. Let me make my first million. And it's so stupid because they would rather make their first million in something that is pretty much just luck. Let me let me give you an example. They would rather make their first million at 18 or 19 or 20 by some lucky crypto pick. You know, they put a thousand dollars into one shit coin and then it turned into a million dollars. Let me tell you something that will ruin your life forever. Because first of all, making a good amount of money at a young age is already a massive challenge. What's even worse is if you got lucky and let's call it what it is. And that is luck. And by the way, I've made a crap ton of money with crypto, but I never thought that that was me being a genius. I just knew, hey, there's a small part of my investment portfolio and cool. In two years, I made almost $10 million from crypto, but that wasn't my career. And let me tell you something. If that was my career, I would be very depressed right now, considering everything that's going on in the crypto markets. And if I didn't get out at the right time and all of this stuff. But for me, I was always very chill about it because I planted my seeds. I've been an entrepreneur for 10 years. I have all of these businesses. So I know that I'm going on a little bit of side tangent here, but that's all to say that the best time, truly, I can tell you the best time, in my opinion, to make money is from the age of 25 to 30. Now I happen to make money a lot younger, but also bear in mind, I started my first entrepreneurial venture when I was 14. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, five years. It took me five years to make my first million. Remember what I told you earlier on? I said five to 10 years to make your first million. What happened to me? Five years. So I'm talking and I'm telling you guys from experience. So going back to my main point, the trajectory, whether it's now or a hundred years ago, I believe that if you are young and when I say young, I mean really below the age of 23, the trajectory has always been very clear. First, you are an apprentice. You are a sponge. You're learning as much as you can. You're absorbing everything and then you can become the master. Now, let me tell you something. These days we rarely have apprenticeships. We have internships and there's a big difference when you're an intern, when you're an intern at a big company, I've even had friends of mine, especially when I was younger, you know, friends of mine that were my age, you know, obviously, I, you know, for me, by the age of 21, I was making millions and millions of dollars a year. But my friends that I grew up with were looking at internships and they were telling me, oh, you know, what internship do you recommend and this and that? And I had to tell them very honestly, I said, listen, if you go to a company that's more than 200 employees, you're going to be lost. No one's going to train you. You're not going to really learn anything. But if you look back 200 years ago, let's say you were even a locksmith, you would be an apprentice, you would be young and you'll be studying the craft. And even in places like Japan, this stuff still goes on. You're young and you work for a company that's not massive, not too big, where you get lost and you learn things and you get to see the back end and you get to see how a master of their craft does something and you get to take all of this in as a sponge. I mean, it's the best thing you could do for yourself at the age of 17, 18, 20, 21. So just understand the difference between an apprenticeship and an internship. Really, the difference is this one, you're going to get time, attention, and you're going to get to really learn the craft. This one, you're just thrown in with the dogs and you have to fend for yourself. No one is really going to take the time and care and attention to show you the ropes. So I really think that if you're 21 or younger, when you're making the decision, hey, what's my next career move? What's my next step? Forget about how much you will earn from it. I want you instead to evaluate how much are you going to learn from it? I want you to look at the thing that you're going to learn and go, hey, you know, if I work at this company for one or two years, what skills will I learn that will make me so much money? It's not even funny at the age of 35. Because listen, if you can spend even two to three years working at the right company and working your way up through the ranks, you should then take that experience and use that to launch pad your own business when the time is right. And listen, it's nothing personal with your old company. You should never breach uh, confidentiality agreements. You should never be disrespectful to your old company. You should never step on toes. If that company made you who you are, but you take that knowledge, you do something different, you offer something different to the market, you offer a different service, a different product, or maybe you even take that information and partner up with someone and go into a totally different industry. But the point is you take those skills that you have learned and you understand and you realize that this is the most valuable asset that you have and you use that to launch pad the next phase of your career. I don't think that people, especially young people, truly understand how important it is to get insider knowledge. You need to get knowledge of the inner workings of the business of the industry. Now, listen, the quickest and easiest way to do that is by investing in education, either investing in your own learning to properly educate yourself or by getting a coach, mentoring guidance. That is by far the easiest and most effective way. Now, not everyone has funds for that. I understand some people are not in that position. So if you don't have funds for that, the best thing that you can do is go out there, associate yourself with a good company, work 
your ass off. You also need to learn work ethic. Cause here's the thing, once you start working for yourself or once you start having your own business, I remember what this was like when I was 17. It's crazy, I worked so much on my company and then also managing school at the same time. But when I was 17, I already had my company. I already even hired my first employee and I dropped out of school. And it was so crazy for me to go from such a hectic schedule to almost having the entire day free. And I actually became so unproductive because I had too much time. I didn't even know what to do with it. So learning that work ethic and that schedule is something that's also gonna be extremely valuable for you. So as I said, associate yourself with the right company. And by the way, the right company doesn't mean the biggest company or the company that makes the most money or the company that even has the most prestige, but the company that is willing to invest in you and the company that is willing to give you the best training and that you'll get the closest proximity to whatever it is that you wanna learn. Now, here's the thing. There's some companies that are too small and you're really not actually gonna learn that much. And there's companies that are too big that once again, you're not gonna learn that much. You wanna find that sweet spot of a company that's not too, too big. I'd say anything a hundred or less, you're still gonna learn a lot. And by the way, when you're looking to join these companies, even in the interview process, even while you're trying to secure the job, make it clear that you care a lot less about money and instead you care a lot more about training and learning specific skills and even asking the company, hey, is there a budget? You know, in my companies, there's actually specific budgets for training. Listen, at some of my companies, I spent $100,000 to train one department on a specific thing. In other companies, I spent $30,000 for them to all meet up three days and for them to mastermind about a specific problem we're facing, all the way down to small things at my company, Every single person can buy as many books as they want and the company will pay for it. That's just a rule I have in my companies. So whether it be big or small, you want to make sure that the company is willing to invest in you because for right now, listen, if you're 32, it's a different story. It's a very different story. I'm not saying 32, you know, you should drop everything, work for free or work for very little and be an apprentice. No, no, you have very different priorities at 32. You're in a very different life phase. I'm talking specifically if you are 21 or younger, you have so much time. It is ridiculous. But as I said, in life, you will not be able to go far unless you have insider knowledge. And this knowledge is behind a wall. And that wall means that you either have to pay to play you have to pay to actually learn this stuff or you join a company and work through the ranks and over the space of months and even years, you get this insider information. So ladies and gentlemen, I know that you want me to come here and tell you that there's this secret AI technology that guarantees that you're going to become a millionaire and all this BS. That's not the way it works. Listen, the world has changed. Of course it is. The opportunities have changed. The way that we conduct business, all of these things have changed. But at the end of the day, there's still business principles that are tried and tested and will always remain. And I don't care if it's a hundred years ago, I don't care if it's now, or I don't care if it's in a hundred years from now. You can never, ever, ever go wrong by being a teenager, being an apprentice, soaking in as much information as you have, getting the insider knowledge in an industry. And then a few years later, when you're ready, use that to launch pad and start your own business, start your own idea, start your own venture. And with that being said, as always, I'm watching you from afar and I'm rooting for you.